These Colombians are without honor spirits. They're cheats. The chemicals we sent are good, no? No complaint. They say they want more even. And they understand that uh, we can guarantee the product gonna clear customs. Mm -hmm. huh? And still they try to chisel. Why? What are they thinking? That it is all profit for us. That we will settle for half of what we agreed because 400,000 Tavari is still a lot of money. The Greek will be angry. This is business, Eitan. The Greek, he will be smart. Now, of all the characters on the wire, y'all, I truly believe the Greek is of the wisest. He's definitely the wisest criminal, for sure. And for starters, he looks to be well into his 70s, meaning he got at least a half a century in the game. That alone is a feat that 99% of criminals won't ever get to claim. And for an international trafficker, this is damn near impossible without some type of federal assistance, which he has in his friendship with Christoph Kortris, a counterterrorism agent who tips the Greek off to any open investigations, keeping him two steps ahead of any law enforcement. Kalimata. We need to talk. But back to the Greek's age for a second, which is an important element in why he's so cold to me. It's said that the chances of a person changing or becoming remorseful for a sinful life drops drastically around the age of 60, meaning that a 70-year-old man will most likely die on whatever hill he's living on with slim chances of rehabilitation. And David Simons, the creator of the show, doesn't like to give anything definite on his characters, believing it will ruin things for the viewer, instead letting fans speculate on what's true and what's not true. But he did give us a solid on the Greek's ideology. He said that he is the embodiment of raw, unencumbered capitalism. Laissez faire. Our cut stays the same though, right? You kidding? What's your name? Nick. Spock. Oh. Well, that's a fair question, Nico. But it has to be the same for everyone. I work no pay. Doesn't matter what's in the cans, we still gotta check them through. That's work, isn't it? We take gas, so you. You don't understand. I understand completely. No one is in this for love. Now, laissez-faire, or raw capitalism, is basically the separation of economy and state, where the government has no authority whatsoever over economic activities. And this is a convenient ideology for a criminal because it places him in an economic system devoid of any rules or law. So guns, bombs, and even women are legal to sell if considered your private property. Now, this ideology is dangerous because it's solely motivated by greed, lacking any morality or any regard for human life. This is the message in season two's introduction, with 13 women dying on a dock due to human trafficking. And it's deep. Because the Greek is a product of raw capitalism, he doesn't believe that what he's doing is a crime, but it's his birthright as an individual to capitalize on the trade of his private property without any government interference. There is not an ounce of remorse for the lost lives of these women, only for the lost profit in their deaths. In a year, each whore would bring a quarter million. What is that? Four million to life. Gone. All right. Anyway, there'll be other girls. Huh? Oh, this one? No fingerprints. No face. It's not a problem. Yes? Mm -hmm. 
Now, the scary thing about the Greek to me is that his evilness is more systematic, more controlled. He never really allows his anger or his ego to drive him. He negotiates with very good manners, even when he's being disrespected. And unlike Marlowe, the Greek only kills for financial motives. See, Marlowe seems to be a bit more sadistic in nature, actually taking pleasure in killing people. And due to the amount of screen time he gets, you might think that Marlowe is actually worse than the Greek. But in the grand scheme of things, in my opinion, the Greek is 10 times worse than Marlowe. One, because people who kill for money tend to last much longer than people who kill for pleasure. The Greek has an inclination towards the power of resources versus the social power that Marlowe yearns for that comes from being visible and having a reputation. The Greek conducts his business in a more civilized manner, but is just as deadly when it benefits him. This, along with his FBI connection, allows him to last almost a century in the game. Now, just imagine all of the deaths that he caused throughout his career. I tell you this much, it'll make all them bodies that Marlowe put in a vacant just a raindrop in the ocean. My name is my name. My name is not my name. And you? To them, you're only the Greek. And of course, I'm not even Greek. Now, the Greek not being a Greek might be one of the most interesting things on the show. The name and the nationality of this man remains a mystery to this day. And he did this to confuse the police and also every member in his organization except Spiros. Etan, Sergei, and everyone else knew nothing about him. They truly believed that Greek was his ethnicity. And this item that the Greek is always toying with are not rosary beads. They're actually called kambaloi or worry beads. They come from Greek and Cyprus culture, traditionally used to contemplate or to pass time. This leading people to believe he might be Cyprus. But me, I lean more towards him being Armenian due to their close relationship to the Greeks and their mutual hate for the Turkish people. Turkish, huh? Get that little hook on your nose. Mm. I'm patriote. I got nothing against the Turks. It's the old world. It's the new. Poseleni. Sam. Sam. I don't know nothing about you. Know. And you're going to tell me about oh. it too? After that, you're done. I give you my word. Now, from this one scene, we actually learned a few things. One, that the Greek speaks multiple languages, letting us know that he's also seasoned culturally, which is very important. Two, the second language that he's speaking to this man is not Turkish, but Greek, leading me to believe that this man is from the Ottoman Empire, which occupied Greece for centuries, making him a natural enemy to Greeks and Armenian people. Three, the Greek chooses to be vague, telling a man that he's done, leading him to believe that he might be fired instead of killed. But he only does this because he doesn't want his prey to panic before they're slaughtered. Going back to his ideology and how he view human beings as cattle or lamb. Horrible. It's like a lamb. Lambs go to slaughter a man he learns when to walk away. Now, growing up in the streets, something that I became wary of were old men and all their goddamn riddles. See, older men in the game tend to be very slick with their words. They like to use parables to confuse people. 
And if you're not on point, they might be using a Bible scripture to threaten your ass. Now, the Greek, when you should be most wary of him, is when he start making statements about the new world. Signore Patriate, I got nothing against the Turks. It's the old world. It's the new. It's a new world, Frank. You should go out and spend some of the money on something you can touch. No car, no cold. It's why we get up in the morning, huh? See, this statement usually ends with somebody getting their throat cut. And notice that he tells Frank to go out and spend his money on something that he can touch. It's why we get up in the morning. But more importantly, notice what he tells Frank to go out and buy. A new car, a new jacket. This is exactly what Nico and Ziggy bought with their money from the Greeks. Subtly letting us know how sharp and observant this old man is. Business or pleasure for you? Business. Always business. Now, this was just an introduction into the Greek's character, y'all. I try to give an understanding on the character's ideology before I dive into their plot lines. And hopefully the viewer will have a wider perspective when they go rewatch the show. And oh yeah, all my Wire fans, I recommend y'all to go subscribe to Pillow Talk Media. They also got some good Wire content over there. And they just made a reaction video to one of mine. Disagreeing with some of my points on the Brother Mozone video. And I'm going to respond as soon as I get some free time. But until then, it's your boy Swartz, y'all. You hear it of man's world. Like, comment, subscribe, and all that. It's time for me to get out of here, y'all.